whole energy infrastructure um, in, in a fairly short space of time, two to three decades. So your mm. growth potential is in the thousands of percent. Um, and I think that's probably a good, pretty good business to be in. Mm. Uh, just to come back to the biofuels question, um, uh, and to take a slightly different tack, um, the worldwide consumption of meat is increasing and that's putting pressure on the grain supplies um, and contributing towards the present huge increases in food prices. Um, uh, do you think we should all become vegetarians? Uh, I think that's probably even more difficult than to ask us to give up our cars. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can give up my car, but I can't quite giving up, try giving up meat. I mean, I, I don't eat very much meat, and I think it's for, there's all sorts of health and environmental reasons why you need to be fairly sparing about meat consumption, um, and you enjoy it more as a, re as a result, actually. You don't, you don't want to have a big pork mm. joint every single day, do you? I mean, it's, it's sort of a treat. Um, but again, it's, I don't think a completely black and white approach to this is very helpful. And if you're looking at farming systems, I mean, the hillsides here, which are very steep um, pasture land, aren't really appropriate for growing leeks or potatoes or anything else. So, I mean, it, it, you have to put animals where you can't grow crops or what, where you, you don't need to leave wildlife alone. So, you, you know, with a mixed farming and you can be generating manure in a, in a farmyard which you're then spreading on the fields, that's actually, you know, then you can reduce the input of chemical fertilizers. So I think livestock are a part of that. But the problem we have at the moment is that huge amounts of the world grain crop are going towards feeding livestock, and particularly in America, but also increasingly in China, where you've got a new middle class who are consuming a more Western sort of meat and dairy type diet and so that's putting further pressure on world food stocks and you know the, the, the actual stock of food now on, on world markets I mean is, is the lowest that it has been for 25 years so uh, we humanity has been using more grain than it produces for the last seven of, of the last seven years out of eight so we've got problems really in terms of keep productivity keeping pace with population growth increasing consumption biofuels and everything else mm. Mm. Now, um, I'm not sure whether you're saying there are, it, it, this is entirely a matter of the way uh, energy is manufactured um, on, a, on, a, on a large scale, um, rather than you know, individuals changing their own lifestyles. I'm not quite sure whether you're saying that's the, 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 that, um, or, or whether we all need to change our ways in in, 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 in some respect, in order to contribute towards the, <coughs> uh, the, the lowering of pressure on the climate. Uh, we're, we're, and, and there's a huge uh, swell of public opinion now that says, yes, we really do need to tackle this um, by a combination of government and personal action. Now, Stretton Climate Care exists in order to help um, ordinary people, local businesses and local households, to to contribute towards uh, uh, this change um, and, and to, to help people to identify ways in which they can both save money but also contribute towards the, the solution of the problem. Um, is there one thing that you can recommend that, uh, that, that local households, ordinary people can do over the next year? What, what's the one thing we can do to make the best contribution to this? There is no one thing. I really don't want to, I mean, I, and I, I also am always very reluctant to make lists of the top three things, because that is, it's, it sort of oversimplifies the issue here. Right. And f for me, the personal lifestyle change element is significant only insofar as it sets the agenda for uh, government changes, which then affect all of us. So, you, you know, it's, it was good that people began to change their light bulbs voluntarily because that then allows the government to say, right, we're going to ban them in 2011 or whatever. Or people started using more efficiency and the building regulations began to catch up. Then the government can say, right, we need carbon neutral build, new build from 2016 onwards. And so the government has to follow changes which people have begun to voluntarily impose on themselves because they're beneficial by and large. Um, but if it stays voluntary, it won't work. And so that's, that, I think, is, is, the, is the key issue here that we're talking about lifestyle changes which are, have to be perceived as being beneficial, but then also need to be enforced. I mean, it, it, a similar analogy might be the smoking, smoking ban, which is certainly residually unpopular amongst pub landlords and amongst smokers, of course, um, but people just accepted it and got on with their lives once it happened. But it would never have happened voluntarily, because you only need one person to smoke and the whole, <laughs> the whole atmosphere is polluted. Mm. 
Um, so, so ultimately, you have to you have to have these things enforced at, at a societal level, and to do that, mm. largely you can do that largely through the market. I mean, you need to mm. up the prices of fossil fuel and make it much more. It has to be a financial incentive. I mean, the reason why Germany has gone hell for leather towards solar power, despite being a fairly cloudy com country, is because you've got feed-in tariffs, which then provide sufficient financial incentive for householders to put solar panels on their roofs. I mean, you get a better rate of return than you do on a, on a you know, tax-free ISA-type investment, because you're getting 8 9% per year um, payback. Now, at the moment in this country, you, you, you're getting 3 or 4% because the government's so parsimonious in supporting the, the renewables industry. So, you know, we have to restructure the market to make, mm. to make people do the right things rather than do the wrong things. Uh, so, so those sort of things do make sense for people to, to do themselves and undertake themselves in order to increase the pressure to, uh, for, for, for government support for renewables. Yeah, I mean, that's something I want to put money in, um, into in my own house. Mm. Is, is, um, you've got solar hot water, I don't yet, um, and solar PV. That's, you know, once, you, once you've done your basic insulation mm. things, you'd be, you'd be stupid to put solar power on without doing insulation because then you're throwing mm. away a lot of energy which you're generating at fairly high cost from your roof. Uh, but once you, once you do all of these things, and once you've got solar on your roof, then you start thinking a lot more about your electricity supply. I don't know if you know how many kilowatt hours per, per, per month you consume, but I certainly don't. You know, when people ask about payback times, I say, mm. well, what's the payback time of your car? Mm. And no one has an answer for that because they're just something which they're perceived as being necessary. Or mm. what's the payback time of your new bathroom? Well, I, I sort of want a new bathroom because the old one was, was avocado or peach, you know. I said, well, <laughs> yes. you know, you don't think... You don't think of these things in strictly financial terms, and I don't think we should necessarily put the same um, logic on, mm. onto renewables either. Uh, well, we, uh, Stratton Climate Care has got a number of these meters that you can put on different appliances, and uh, they're quite eye-opening, actually. One, 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 people can borrow them free and use them and measure. But they're even more eye-opening if it's your power from your oh, roof, yes. which, is yes. what's, which is what's being wasted by something being left on standby. That's when you turn mm. it off at the wall. Yes, yes. Well, Mark, thank you very much indeed. You've uh, stimulated our thinking, and um, uh, I, I think you'll encourage us to carry on with, with our work and, uh, uh, and, and help local people to think about ways in which they can save money uh, and they can invest in their future and the future of uh, our children and grandchildren. And uh, we're very grateful to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.